from the crust to the toppings and everything in between. They're not round. They're the ugliest things on the planet, but God almighty, they'll take you to the next level. Pittsburghers love their pizza. I've been coming here for 24 years. Some pies so good, they're worth the long drive. And I've been begging them to put a location where I stay at, but it's worth a ride. Others creating that sense of nostalgia. You're gonna eat here, and then your kids are gonna eat here, and then their family's gonna eat here. And since I was a little child, my dad used to drag me in this place. Pizza makers working to perfect the Steel City slices for decades. You've gotta be here all every day. You know, you gotta open and stay here. You know, uh, you can't go golfing. You gotta stay here. Missions to keep the family business alive. Every day I get thanked for keeping this place open. Bring a taste of Italy and New York to the three rivers. That's what we want, right? So all the, the reason why we get the char, some people will say, oh my God, you burnt my pizza. No, we didn't burn your pizza. And create a sense of community for every corner of Southwestern Pennsylvania. If you hear Ambridge, you, you're, it's PlayStation pizza, you know? Everywhere you go, there's a pizzeria. And I, I think, um, and they're all a little bit different. Yeah, our customers are our friends, our family, more or less. Those customers also well aware of the age old debates. Very few people I've ever told the whole story. To. I'll take it to my grave. The city of Pittsburgh, a melting pot of pizza. No, it's definitely unique. There's no doubt about it. Forget about New York City, forget about Chicago. Pittsburgh has the best pizza. Tonight on Chronicle, Slice of the Burg. Welcome to Chronicle Slice of the Bird. Tonight's special does come with a warning though. You will be hungry and in the mood for pizza by the end of this. We can promise you that. That's right. Whether it's sitting in a booth with your family on a Friday night after a football game, or walking to get a slice or a cut on your lunch break, or maybe even working behind the counter as a teenager, we know that pizza can mean more than just cheese and pepperoni to a whole lot of you. That of course rings true for the people making the pies and turning Pittsburgh into one of the most unique and passionate places for pizza lovers. We live in a city always ranking at the top of national lists, comparing the number of available pizza restaurants and the amount of money spent on pizza each year. Tonight, we're taking you inside the kitchen for a taste of what Pittsburgh really has to offer. I've never been to a place where I could say I had pizza better there than I've had in Pittsburgh. So every time you, you turn around, there's a new pizzeria coming in. You don't have to be a pizza connoisseur to notice the number of available pizza shops lining the streets of Pittsburgh's 90 neighborhoods and beyond. Best pizza in the country. Best pizza by far. Look at the pizza box. It's an original. Can't get no better than that. A city of tradition. It's like Permanis, it's a staple food. Combining quantity and quality. This is the best pizza shop in the world. I've been coming here for 50 years. For years, Pittsburghers have found ways to tie the Ohio Valley, Midwest, and East Coast together while also putting a new flair on a decades-old dish. I feel like the pizza game in Pittsburgh needed a little boost. Fresh mozzarella cheese, shredded mozzarella cheese, sausage, and I'm going to go whip up an egg to crack on top. A city creating a pizza scene, unlike many others around the country. And I can't re recreate the smoke and the cigarettes for you while I make pizza. I can't. Sorry. I'm not that. I am not all of those things of my grandfather. People do miss that. They want us to have all that. We get a lot of phone calls like, we're from Kentucky, do you really serve pizza this way? We're in Nebraska, I heard you do cold cheese on your pizzas. For the next hour, we're taking you on a trip throughout the city of Pittsburgh and other surrounding counties. Pittsburgh uh, pizza, it become more popular, you know, like uh, this 15 years, become more popular. But I think Pittsburgh pizza as a whole right now is probably the strongest it might have ever been. Okay, we can't continue this episode of Chronicle without talking about the Pittsburgh basics, Kelly. Right, everyone knows we have the Pirates, the Penguins, and the Steelers. We like pierogies, and we put french fries on everything. And of course, we're home to the age-old pizza debate. Minios or Aiello's? That is a very classic pizza question here in the city, and reporter Sheldon Ingram is asking both families how it started, and will they ever tell us the real truth? Squirrel Hill. One of Pittsburgh's 90 neighborhoods, and few of any, have as many pizzerias as Squirrel Hill. Pizza galore, especially in the 2100 block of Murray Avenue. 
Here sits the legendary tale of two pizza rivals, Minio's and Aiello's. Is there a pizza war between Minio's and Aiello's? Yes, you might want to. I feel like it's more customer generated. We came over to Little Shoes to get some Christmas gifts and um, had to stop by Ella's and grab a couple pizzas. Everything. I like the workers, I like the pizza, I like, um, yeah, just the flavor. Everything about it, every pizza I've ever had, had here was perfect. I Ella's. I just think it's the cheese, the sauce, the way it blends together, it's just goodness. With customers of both yeah, places. Yeah, it, it's not necessarily the owners of Minio's and the owners of Aiello's going at it. It's the customers of Aiello's and the customers of Minio's going at it on social media. Who has the better product? This pizza here is from Minio's, and this one is from Aiello's. But this isn't about which one tastes the best. It's about how this pizza war got started in the first place. Minio's versus Aiello's. Everyone wanted to know what, you know, the whole story was. Would you ever give people the whole story? Very few people I've ever told the whole story to. 1955 is when Giovanni Minio Sr. and his wife Rose came to Pittsburgh from Sicily, Italy. He opened up Minio's in 1958. Dominic and Giovanni Jr. are his sons. Both started working for their dad when each turned 13. They've been here since, now as co-owners. He taught us well. Um, everything he did, he did from scratch. Same cheese, same sauce. The products, like the peeled tomato cans, come from Italy. But that's not all they came from Italy. Giovanni Sr. brought in another Italian immigrant. His name is Eddie Balestrino. Balestrino eventually brought over his nephew, Joe Aiello, to also work at Minio's. And that lasted 20 years until. And then he decided to open his own place right up the street. And just four doors away. But why? There are no two better people to ask than Michael Aiello and Kathy Aiello Willis, son and daughter of Joe Aiello. He was a hard worker. He was passionate, dedicated, and very proud of what he created and gave it all. Why did he want to start a pizza business? That was his dream, to come to America. Now he started at Minio's. Correct, yes. And why did he leave Minio's to start his own? It's part of the American dream he wanted? I'll just leave, yeah, leave it at that. No, we won't leave it at that because there's more to this delicious story hidden somewhere beneath the layers of cheese, sauce, and dough. Something happened between Joe Aiello and Giovanni Minio Sr. Both families reveal that Joe Aiello wanted to open a second Minio's in Monroeville, but the Minio family said no. There were reasons and issues behind it, and I'm not going to elaborate on those, but they weren't good things. My Seems mother. to be a secret kept by both families. <laughs> you, don't want to see, you don't want to see what that no. falling out was? No. 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 But you know? Yes. I'll take it to my grave. I'm not going to give you the whole story because it's not, it's not something that I want to air on the air. But Medios and Aiello's continue to thrive as two of Pittsburgh's iconic pizzerias. And this story ends with one pressing question for both families. Have you guys ever had a slice of Minio's? No, I can honestly say no. No? Never. Never had it. Too. Have you guys ever had a slice of Aiello's pizza? <laughs> Never. Never. <laughs> Never. Never. Never will. And long live the pizza rivalry. It's hard to believe that pizza wasn't a thing until after World War II when Italian immigrants made their way here to Western Pennsylvania, like many cultures, bringing with them some of the unique foods that we enjoy today. We are very thankful for that. Our next story is about the man known as the Pizza King of Pittsburgh, who brought pizza to the Steel City in the early 1950s. Uncle Vinny becoming a pizza legend and helping others create their own empire. If you've lived or worked in the eastern suburbs of Pittsburgh these past 70 years, you don't need a neon sign to let you know what's inside here. Best pizza in the country. Best pizza by far. Vincent's Pizza Park, the home of the Vinnie Pie. They're not round. They're the ugliest things on the planet, but God almighty, they'll take you to the next level, man. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> Eric Warwick drives all the way from his Shaler home. This is a Pittsburgh pilgrimage. It's like Permanis, it's a staple food. Coming here since he was three. My dad used to drag me in this place when, when Uncle Vinny was still alive, and I love that guy, he's great. Uncle Vinny among Eric's earliest childhood memories, watching the founder of this pizza empire, the late Vincent Canese, perform his magic. When Uncle Vinny was here, you got the cigarette ashes. 
The Lucky Strike. Oh yeah, he'd be smoking a Lucky Strike and he'd have a big ash on the end of it. He'd be putting the pepperoni and the sausage on there and the next thing you know, you'd look over and the ash would be gone. That's in there, baby. That's in there. That's Pittsburgh right there. Woo! Vincent Canese opened his pizza place here in 1953. For one man in the Pittsburgh area, a night person, rolling in dough is something he literally... Only operating at night and going late into the night, as Vincent himself told WTAE's Mike Schneider in 1977. Your atmosphere has changed from hour to hour. The first part of the evening is nice and calm. As the night grows on, the animal comes out. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. Especially when a full moon. Love you. Thank you so much. And it's now being run by his only granddaughter, Lisa Zollner, who grew up and lived her whole life in Los Angeles. It was a culture shock, let me tell you. After her grandfather died 13 years ago, the restaurant closed. Her plan was to come here for one month, get it up and running, find someone to manage it, and go back home to L.A. But she quickly found out why her grandfather had always dreamed of keeping this place in the family. It is so special to the customers. It keeps my grandfather alive for me. He was larger than life. Old photos and press clippings chronicles the life of her famous grandfather, born to Italian parents, his dad from Naples, his mom from Sicily. When he was about 23 years old, he went with my grandmother and they drove cross country with a head of lettuce in their pocket and $7. That was enough to get them to California back in 1952, where he learned the pizza business from his uncle, who settled in San Francisco. Vincent was back a few months later, renting a space in North for sales and drawing big crowds. That was the first time anyone had ever heard of pizza. Like pizza was this new food and they wanted to try it out. In 1953, he moved to the landmark spot on Route 30 in North Braddock. Westinghouse was across the street at the time. So all the old steel workers and all the people that worked at Westinghouse would come here on their breaks. The perfect spot for hungry customers, the secret family sauce, and piling on a mountain of specialty meats. That was his recipe and there's, they just, when they pull together, there's this grease that collects at the bottom and everyone calls it Lake Vincent's and they want to dip their crust in Lake Vincent's and it's this whole, it's like a meal in and of itself. It's like a second meal. It's a second meal. <laughs> Quite honestly, I think this is probably the best pizza I've ever had, <laughs> so. What makes it so special? It's just, it's, it's good, the crust, the taste of it, the sauce, it's just, it's good. It's just a good pizza. We'll be back though. We'll be back for more. <laughs> I mean, to this day, every single person that comes in here has a story about my grandfather. I mean, he is the man in Pittsburgh. Vince was a great guy. I enjoyed him. He was funny. He was funny. If you, if, if he liked you, he liked you and you were you were under his wing. Shelly Farron was one of the lucky people who worked under the wing of Vincent Canese. Do you remember the first pizza pie you made? Oh, I'm sure it was terrible. I would tell him, you know what we need to do, Vince? And he'd say, you get your name on a sign, you can do whatever you want. Here we are. <laughs> You're doing what you want. I'm doing what I want. <laughs> that experience, making the famous Vinnie Pie. I really learned everything that I know. Gave her the confidence to launch her own place in Turtle Creek called Shelly Pie. When I was up at Vincent's, they would say, we'll have a Vinnie Pie. And I said, you're having a Shelly Pie. That's where it came from. <laughs> with that nod to Pittsburgh pizza tradition, Shelly opened her restaurant with two partners 11 years ago, repurposing the old VFW, providing Turtle Creek with a much needed, sustained shot in the arm. We survived the bridge closing down, we survived Route 30 caving in, and we survived COVID. COVID so I'm feeling pretty good. I know everything that's going on with my pizza. I make them. <laughs> I put love into everything. Shelly says she hopes her success inspires other women to pursue their dreams of ownership. It's very rewarding. It's, it's exhausting. Don't get me wrong. I'm getting up there. <laughs> I'm getting old. But it's very rewarding. All my, my hard work has paid off. I had two people who um, invested in me and I ran with it. It is Pittsburgh. I'm Pittsburgh. I mean, I'm born and raised. It's Pittsburgh. It, I mean, y y you know, you see the other places and I, I, we have, forget about New York City, forget about Chicago. Pittsburgh has the best pizza. It's a constant quest for a perfection that doesn't actually exist. A constant quest to create the perfect pie. The flour that we use is from Naples. The tomatoes that we use are from Naples. The wood is going to offer a nice little subtle smoky element. Next on Chronicle, 
the special ingredients and science behind getting the recipe just right. Welcome back to Chronicle and the Kitchen. <laughs> Some of us prefer a thin crust pizza, others thick. For other people, it's a decision of a lot of cheese or just a little bit. But Pittsburgh pizza makers want you to know they're putting a whole lot more than just ingredients into every pie. A few restaurants reporter Sheldon Ingram stopped by sounded more like a science class than a kitchen. What makes pizza so good? So irresistible. Some say it's the dough, others the sauce, or the cheese. But the owners of Mercurio's, Slice of New York, and Piccolo Forno say there's one more thing, dedication to the craft. going to cool it down. Dominic Verduzzi is the owner of Piccolo Forno in Lawrenceville. He says his customers dine on pizza prepared with passion. Watch yourselves. Cooked in a wood-fired oven. I'd like to think that they can definitely taste the love that goes into it, if nothing else. That but. love he's talking about is rooted in his upbringing in the Tuscany region of Italy, where pizza originated. It was always awe-inspiring to see these wonderful pizzas come out of these wood-fired ovens. Branduzzi was brought to the United States when he was four, but he frequently visited his family in Italy and learned how to make pizza in wood-fired ovens. The wood is going to offer a nice little subtle smoky element. Created by a blazing wood-fire oven kept at 900 degrees manually. It does take a little more, um, a little more attention and a little more practice and uh, know-how, but I think that that's one of the things that, that comes through in, in the final product. Mercurio's dedication to the craft is also found and its loyalty to where pizza originated. We were inspired by the food and the pizza that we were eating in, in Naples specifically. Mercurio's is family owned by Anna Cruset, her brother Joseph Mercurio, and a third sibling, Michael. They serve Neapolitan style pizza, cooked in a wood fire oven at 1000 degrees. They're fiercely committed to using imported ingredients, relentless and finding ways to get better. Now we've tried different methods of how to ferment the dough, how to cook the dough, how to knead the dough uh, in ways that will bring up the most air, the most flavor. The flour that we use is from Naples, the tomatoes that we use are from Naples, the Lupara cheese that we use is from Naples. We want it to be authentic. Mercurio's and Piccolo Forno also have something else in common. Each restaurant uses an oven imported from Italy. Then once the steam's worked off, right, and the key is you want to be able to pick this up, fold it. This is New York style pizza at Slice of New York in Export. They are driven by the science of making pizza. Just listen up. The enzymes in the bacteria won't work if they're at too cold or too hot of a temperature. Right. Sourdough is packed full of prebiotics, which feed probiotics, which again, help with, uh, the, with the bacteria. Might sound like a chemistry lab, but it's really a pizzeria where detail matters. Sean Jaffergen is the owner. His son Dylan is the dough maker. Sourdough is blended with the base dough for a healthy approach to this New York style pizza. You want it to be easily digestible? Yeah. Is that the intent? That is that is my that is my intent. I want it to be as easily digestible as possible. How do you make that happen? Well, that's just through the enzymes in the uh, lactic acid bacteria, the fermentation process. So and then they get detailed about their ingredients. You're very particular about the tomatoes you're using. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and how do you determine what type you're using? So we use the rubric to tell us what the best tomato is based on this set of criteria. We're looking for a certain color, a certain viscosity, certain texture. And they're always looking to get better and better. My recipe today will be vastly different than it is two months from now. All in the name of perfection. And that's a good healthy slice of pizza right there. Slice of New York, Mercurio's, Piccolo Forno. It's in the love, the passion, and the science.
It's the same recipe since 76. We've never changed. Sometimes it takes more than just a great pizza to get Pittsburghers coming back for more. We're a diamond in the rough and they kind of, you know, other people don't know it, but if you're from this little area, you do. Next on Chronicle. As corny as it sounds, like sometimes that block feels like Times Square just because it's just like, mayhem over there. The neighborhood staples and their commitment to the community. We have talked a lot about the different styles and what goes into making a good pizza, but what about the atmosphere? That's right. Some restaurants have been in Pittsburgh families for generations now and have grown to be staples in the community. Reporter Tom Garris starts in the Pittsburgh neighborhood, synonymous with Italian culture, Bloomfield. It sits right along the main drag through the neighborhood, and even at 11 a.m., lots of fresh pizzas are coming out of the oven because the customers are already lining up. This is the best pizza shop in the world. I've been coming here for 50 years. Yeah, as soon as we open up, we get, we get drilled. Joe Pastorero's Angelo's Pizza in Bloomfield has come to hold a defining role in the city's Little Italy. It's like a pride thing. More just the pride itself is just amazing and it keeps you going every day. Joe's brother opened the shop in the 1970s and he's kept the tradition going since the 90s. Delicious, crispy, all, all the good things that you want from pizza. A staple for the hospitals in the neighborhood, West Penn and UPMC Children's, bring out the local workers. But that's why we always break between 11 and 11.30, so we can be the first ones in line when we come down. Others are after the hoagies, which have a homemade Italian mayo and are finished in the oven. I went to the hairdressers the other day and they was talking about Angela's hoagies, so you know they good. All the little things together make the difference in this business. The prime pizza location in Pittsburgh is in the South Hills, and with that prime location comes a prime product. The case at the front of Adamo's on Potomac Avenue has the essentials, classic pizza, sandwiches, and the garlic knots. Our garlic knots go off, but people love our garlic knots. Owner Anthony Badamos opened this spot in February 2010 in the storefront of a pizza shop where his family went as a kid. I had at least, and so I had like 30 days to basically you know, dial in some recipes and clean the place up and put it together and uh, that was the start. He recently closed the Mount Lebanon location and moved not too far away to Dormont on Potomac Avenue. Loving the new neighborhood, loving the new space. The dedication of his South Hills customers helping grow the business. At his second shop on Federal Street on the city's north side, a similar story. Justin. It also housed a pizza joint for decades. People know that they pull on that door and they're going to get something good. I come in here mostly every day or every other day to get the white pizza or the pepperoni. It's an area that means a lot to him. He has family here and a desire to keep serving that same neighborhood. Many of the black and white family photos on the walls are from the north side. Plus the north side is just, in my opinion, uh, insanely underserved. It's like that classic like corner swinging door pizzeria where it's a hole in the wall. Folks come in, they take two or three steps in the front door. They see the display case. It's just like turn and burn all day long. First and foremost, without being corny, it's it's like love and passion. Outside of the city in Westmoreland County, Dom's Pizza in Trafford keeps it all about family, food and football. On the food front, this rotating stone deck oven direct from Italy is Dom Pacor's baby. So, you know, you're going to get, you know, uniform pizza every single time you see how it rotates and it goes through the flame. We are the old fashioned pizza shop, you know, we're not, you know, we're not trying to be trendy. It kind of drives me nuts that pizza has become like, uh, uh, like bougie almost. And it's like but family is first. A wall of his shop is dedicated to his six kids. Gino, he's first. Drea, Talia, Gia, Nina, and Rocco. We'll have a timer here when it goes in. Images of Penn Trafford football play a big part of the ambiance with their games even streaming on Friday nights during the season. But Dom is no stranger to another team. You're a busy guy. Not only do you have the large family, you own this restaurant, you're also a head football coach. Yeah, yes. That's easy. We were there this fall as head coach Dom Pecora's East Allegheny Wildcats secured an eighth straight playoff appearance. He brings them fresh pizzas basically every week. 
their family too. I go to war for him. I love him more than in this world. EA would eventually fall to Bel Verdon in the Whippeal 3A semifinal, but they don't focus just on wins and losses. It's about playing hard. The same philosophy Pacora brings to his business. We're from this little neck of the woods, you know. It, it, we, that's how we, we've made it this long, is the support of just, you know, a very small group and a small little segment, you know. We're, the, we're you know, the local place that everybody kind of knows. Tonight on Chronicle, our pizza journey continues from keeping it in the family. You have to be born into it. You have to live the business. To setting a distinct Pittsburgh style. It's a little bit, you know, beefier in the crust. And even more so, a distinct taste. And we always have new people coming in from all over um, to try it. After it comes out of the oven, we pile on cold provolone cheese. We're buying almost 1,200 pounds a week of chicken to cut up for that pizza. When Chronicle returns, This show isn't about trying to create a pizza war in southwestern PA. We're taking a bite into the history of these restaurants and seeing how some have been able to stand the test of time for decades. However, when you have dozens of pizza restaurants in one area, you of course are bound to find a variety of slices with the two most common, New York and Pittsburgh style. As reporter Sheldon Ingram shows us, when you talk about pizza, debates over the best places, the perfect toppings, and the proper way to eat it are inevitable. Pizza, it's got style. Neapolitan style, Chicago, Detroit, New York style, and get ready for it, Pittsburgh style. That's right, Pittsburgh style pizza. Thicker than New York style, but not as thick as Chicago style. I think you're real accurate on that. But it's New York that rivals Pittsburgh. Caliente, Melanote, and Minio's, prominent spots that define Pittsburgh style pizza. I think Pittsburgh style is something between, it's not quite as thin and crispy as New York. It's a little bit, you know, beefier in the crust. In Pittsburgh, it's more of, um, more, more of a softer style dough, I would say. It reminds you of, of New York because it's, it's thin on the inside. It reminds you of Chicago because it's got the nice thick crust on the outside. New York style pizzerias are all over town. Customers worship thin and crispy, whole pie or by the slice. New York style is thin, crispy, um, and not very heavy on the sauce. New York style, you get the, the crispness of the crust. Uh, as soon as you bite into it, you hear that crunch. Not when you lift it up, everything falls off, and then you need a fork and a knife. Here's a close look at the two styles side by side. The thicker slice is Pittsburgh style. More cheese, typically provolone, or a blend of provolone and mozzarella. New York style is thin enough to fold when eating it, made primarily with mozzarella. I told you how crispy it is, stick stands out. Nino Sinceri is the owner of Bellinote in the Strip District. Their Pittsburgh style has that distinct crunch associated with New York style pizza. We make that crust, crust because it's special. So I always tell everybody, well, if, I'm, if I'm there and they pull a pizza out and they throw it on the table and cut it, if they cut it, if it doesn't crunch when, when they cut it, I tell them to throw it out. For the good toss. We go out to California and pick our tomatoes. Caliente's Pittsburgh style pizza is so good, Owner Nick Bogaz has opened 12 restaurants. Heavy cheese, a thick, robust crust, but they also offer a variety of other styles as well to satisfy everyone. Everybody has their favorite pizzeria in Pittsburgh. It's a very, a very, very hot topic. Minio's in Squirrel Hill calls their Pittsburgh style pizza the best in the world. On a small pizza, we use three quarters or more of a pound of cheese. Um, we use a solid seven, eight ounces, seven, eight ounces of sauce on there. But that New York style is very comfortable calling Pittsburgh home, especially at Slice on Broadway. Because the owner, Rico Lunardi, is from Pittsburgh. Walk in and pizza is on full display with various toppings, like a New York pizzeria. When I left Pittsburgh for a while, went to school in Philly, you know, I, I saw, you know, what pizza was really like. Mitty Fierro's on Carson Street. 
in Pittsburgh. Their New York style is a nod to the 28-inch pizza, a nod to Hoboken, New Jersey. That's the home of owner Ryan Smith. My cousin actually came up with the idea. Um, he lived in Hoboken right across the river from Manhattan um, in New York City, and we used to hang out. And there were a bunch of pizza places that all did 28, 30-inch pizza. Right here. Right there. I don't let the dough rise. Inside Sal's on Carson Street, owner Sal Chatter brings his New York style from Greenwich Village in Manhattan. He's been doing it for 31 years. He sums up the uniqueness of the New York style pizza. Now, in New York style, that's how we fold it. And we walk the street and eat it. New York, Pittsburgh, both are pizza with style. It's not like a part-time thing where you come in and say, yeah, I'm going to work a couple months and cook pizzas. It's not how it's going to work. The thin pastry-style crust pizza that Joey O's in Hemfield Township is famous for has a distinct flavor that you can only find here. This is not a dough you can toss or stretch by any means like that. So this has to be done under good temperatures, and which has to be adjusted for the climate and stuff like that. If it feels like owner Anthony Joeyo is obsessed with each ingredient, each step of the process, and holding those who work for him to high standards. That's our fresh sauce every, we make every single day. It's because he is, and it's because of a promise he made to his grandfather. And he says, look, you gotta, you gotta promise to keep, you know, keep the integrity, keep it the same, don't change anything, nothing at all, and, and you'll do well. His grandfather and grandmother came up with this unique recipe together in the 1950s, combining their passions. He, a restaurateur, and she, an authentic baker. My grandmother being the way she was, she, she really didn't like traditional pizza that much. And so she started coming up with ways and stuff like that for her experience with baking and this and that to come up with a unique pizza crust. When Anthony got the blessing to open Joyo's, he sold his house and moved into the top of the restaurant. He put in 16 hour days for years perfecting the pizza process. You have pizzas from a plain cheese pizza to one with a, a meat pizza with a ton of toppings on it. It all takes longer. That one's gonna cook shorter than that one. So you have to know where to put them in the oven and how to turn them around. It's actually an art. You have to, you have to, maybe it's genetics. He probably takes after me, so that's why he's good at it. That's Tony's son, Angelo, working that six level oven. It fills with 50 pizzas at a time on a busy night. 32 years later and the recipe unchanged, Anthony is enjoying the fans he's amassed. This is my first trip here and it's absolutely excellent. It's totally different than what I've experienced anywhere else. And uh, every time we come here, it, it's delicious. Oh, it's definitely unique. There's no doubt about it. I mean, that's what made Joey O's Joey O's Pizza. It's, it, it, you can't replicate that. And that's why he says you'll never see a for sale sign outside of his business. It's family or nothing. Hopefully hand it over to the next generation. Some of the kids here, their parents used to work here. And now the kids are here with me. You know, their parents used to work with my dad. Uh, now they're here with me, you know, so on and so forth. Michael Shuley, owner of Milano's Pizza in Allison Park, knows a thing or two about growing up in a pizza family. His childhood was spent right here. Almost every day, yeah. They pick me up after school. I had an older brother, the same thing. Pick him up after school, we go up to the shop. We did our homework there. His father, Herman Shuley, started the business in 1975, but couldn't give it a family name. Because when he migrated here from Italy, all of his buddies were opening up pizza shops, and they're all going after their last names. Our last name was Shuley. There was a Shuley's Pizza in Oakland. So he decided to be a little bit different, and uh, they picked a little city from Italy called Milan, and then went with Milano. Herman would put in 70-hour weeks for decades. Over that time, and now with Michael at the helm, Milano's Pizza has become a staple in Hampton and Shaler Townships. Since my dad kind of grew with the neighborhood, we uh, were part of the neighborhood. So we knew everybody that came in, we knew everybody that came out of there. It's more of a generational thing. Um, it was like family. We still, you know, make our dough, we still pan it out by hand, we're still hand tossing it traditionally, just like we have it written on our menu. Um, you know, that, that kind of, that's fading. You know, there's only a few shops that are kind of still doing it traditionally like that. 
Michael doesn't shy away from competition either. He knows the area has more pizza shops to choose from these days. And he says keeping it in the family has worked for them so far, and that's what he sees for its future success. Oh, that's the best part about it, is, is the personalities of everybody. And when you have like a mash of, you know, 10 different personalities in the kitchen, and everyone's like cohesively working, like it is amazing. Will this keep evolving, you know, after me? I'm not sure. I said, I have two kids now. I don't know what they want to do, they're real young. Um, you know, if they want to continue, you know, uh, leading this and taking over, uh, great. We're back in the kitchen where the magic is happening. And by now you may be thinking, okay, some pizza places are great, but there's only so much you can do to make pizza different. At the end of the day, it's just crust, sauce, cheese, and toppings. Uh, not so fast there. We did find some local shops here reimagining those ingredients to give their pizza a taste that you can't find anywhere else. How many all together? Industry research firm Ipsis World identified 77,459 pizza restaurants in America. But every day, there are people all over this country ringing up police station pizza in Ambridge, Beaver County to seek out that something special. I think we did Alaska, we did, uh, we did a pretty much every state around, you know what I mean? If, it, it, people from Ambridge are all over and, you know, they, uh, they really enjoy getting a chip, you know, I mean, that's that's the great part about it. Uh, taste of home. It's pretty cool. Owner Bill Kane recognized the demand when he took over and seized the opportunity to serve a national audience by shipping. I mean, it's been around for almost 70 years now, so probably people that live here for a while moved out of state and they, they get it delivered every every year. For both their out of state customers and those who enjoy it just feet from the business on these steps, it's a taste that gives them that unmistakable feeling of home. It's just something about the way it just melts perfect, um, you know, and then when you have the other toppings, you know, it just, it all just, it works, man. You know, it's just, it's really good. Police Station Pizza is known for being an Ohio Valley style of pizza, which is unmelted cheese. Unconventional, to be sure. I mean, you know, you'll have people that aren't familiar with it. So like a person that's not familiar with it, they want their stuff melted. They want it cooked on. But then once you like kind of tell them how we do it and they give it a try, they'll, they'll come around, you know, to our way of doing it. A little bit of cheese is melted on the crust with the sauce in the oven, but then they add on heaps more cold. I mean, it's like the top business around, you know, um, <clears throat> if you hear Ambridge, you, you're it's police station pizza. Oddly, police station pizza isn't even their real name. It's Pizza House officially, but because of its location next to the old police station and the community's preference for down to earth descriptions, that name stuck. But what makes it really special is the people that work inside, the owner of it. There's not a nicest person in town, but you go see police station pizza. They are polite to you and they smile at you. You're making everybody happy, you know? Um, and we always have new people coming in from all over um, to try it. There are a few other places serving up Ohio Valley style in our area. Vito's is one of them. Located on Banksville Road in the South Hills, only minutes from the city, they've amassed a following from those craving something different. Especially with social media in the past few years, we get a lot of phone calls like, we're from Kentucky, do you really serve pizza this way? We're in Nebraska, I heard you do cold cheese on your pizza, is that true? Um, and yeah, we've had people like travel to us. Michael Van Newkirk grew up with Beto's. His grandfather was one of the founders back in 1953. What you could call him here. an original here, disruptor, but we, but we, generating buzz in the world of pizza for creating something different. And it has stood the test of time, selling by the slice 70 years later. So pepperoni and sausage, all the stuff comes on top of the cold cheese. Um, so you're getting the hot crust and sauce with the cold cheese and it's just like the perfect bite of pizza. It's like that hot and cold marriage is really, really uh, delicious. It's, it's meant to be in like fresh off the, out of the oven. We mentioned Joeyo's earlier in the program. Their unique sweet crust has pizza enthusiasts traveling from near and far to give it a try. So you get the saltiness of the cheese, 
you get the uh, sweetness of the crust and then the sauce. So it just kind of comes together all as one. It's a unique flavor and it's unique to Joyo's. The taste is so different that sometimes customers don't know what to think at first. For the first time he called me out of the dining room, he's sitting with a whole bunch of people and he said, this is the worst pizza I ever had in my life. You know, I wasn't shocked, it's okay. You know, it's, you know, okay, no problem, this and that. And uh, his wife took the leftovers home and for some reason he called me the next day and he said, I think I made a mistake. This is actually the best pizza I ever had. And for the days you can't choose between your cravings, there's Frank's Pizza and Chicken. We've been doing a buffalo chicken pizza for 30 years and it's it's been amazing. James Vereen and his family members run Frank's four locations. Without a doubt, they say the buffalo chicken pizza is the fan favorite. I mean, when I took over, we were literally deboning chicken breast by the day and cutting that up. And it got to the point where I would start buying like 10 pounds of boneless chicken to where now we're buying almost 1,200 pounds a week of chicken to cut up for that pizza. And it's a lot of cutting. The other menu item that exploded at Frank's is the ranch. They went from selling it in a side cup to selling it by the bottle. The best ranch with the best buffalo chicken pizza, maybe in Pennsylvania or the East Coast. The world. Or the world. Whether it's hot and cold, you're craving sweet and salty, or chicken and ranch, the Pittsburgh pizza scene has something different for every taste. Still ahead tonight on Chronicle. We come from Sicily. It's a simple Sicilian pizza. Tapping into some deep Italian roots. Well, I have a lot of people been here a long time. They're with that. We grew up through all these people in my work. And more of that family mentality. When Pittsburghers think of pizza, a lot of them think about the place we're standing right now, Fiori's, one of many places keeping that family tradition alive. And in the city's Mount Washington neighborhood, you see a similar mission, keep the customer happy and the taste of Italy in every bite. For nearly 30 years, customers have filled the tables here at La Tavola Italiana restaurant. Joe and Carmela Giramita serving all as family and friends. Because once you come once or twice, even the first time you come, you are welcome in our home. Yeah. Anyway, this oven works great. This is a baker's oven. It's not considered a pizza oven. But it's here in this kitchen where La Tavola first became a destination in Mount Washington with their handcrafted pizza. Do you think everyone who fills the dining room who comes here for dinner knows that this whole thing started with, with pizza? I don't think so. This is Joe Giuseppe back in 1965. Thank you. Pose. Getting his start from his dad at Josephine's Pizza, named after his mom, just down the block on Boggs Avenue. I was so happy that we were in business, but as later in life, I'm looking at the picture and I'm saying, my dad bought me a job. That job gave Joe a platform to create his original pizzas. And I make him the pizza boat. And he developed a loyal following. The pizza boat became Stouffer's French bread pizza. Joe and Carmela showing me the intricacies of their creations. Now this is the Sicilian. It's easier than in the pans. You pull it out, see the cheese is already melting. Tried and true recipes. It's pleasure food. Carried with them from the old country. We come from Sicily. It's a simple Sicilian pizza. Including the braided crust Carmela prepares. If you like crust, you'll love this. For her Americanized arugula pizza. They call it rugetta in Rome. Rugetta, not arugula. Yeah. Finishing it off with a balsamic or hot honey drizzle, a trendy offering in many Pittsburgh pizza shops now. We combine the old and the new because this is older pizza, this is a new order. But something Carmela and Joe have been slicing up in Pittsburgh for 59 years. It's personal. You know, you have to do it with love. Think about almost 60 years making pizza. They didn't love it, they don't be here right now. 
just two miles away from La Tavola, you know, in Italy, yeah. another prominent pizza family has been tossing dough for almost 50 years. This is Fiori's Pizzeria, made Pittsburgh famous by its dedicated fans. The shop, since 1979, a model of consistency and simplicity. Since I opened the first time, I never change it. It starts with the red sauce made from imported Italian tomatoes. Most are uh, uh, dear here. And the fresh premium cheese. It goes in the oven. That recipe making Fiorentino Masatello a community icon in this Brookline neighborhood. The tomato went up, it was expensive, but I never I keep them by and never change it. Fiorentino telling us he doesn't want to destroy the pizza or Fiori's reputation. So you pay a little more, but uh, you get a good result. He opened Fiori's here at the corner of West Liberty and Capitol Avenues in 1979 with his brother-in-law, Giuseppe Pepe. Perfect timing, too. The same year the Pirates won the World Series because this place echoes, we are family. He sent all three of his children on to college and they graduated. They don't get a job, but they, they, they make a pizza now. His son and daughter work with him in Brookline and his oldest son opened a second location in McMurray, expanding their father's legacy. That's what they want to do. I mean, I want them to do different stuff, but they want to fall dirty and okay, making pizza. <laughs> So many people like the pizza. Fiore says many young people have asked him for advice about opening up their own pizza shops. You've got to be here all every day. You know, you've got to open and stay here. You know, uh, you can't go golfing. You've got to stay here. I'm still here. I want to stay another 50 years and then I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> we cut our pizza in a party cut. So it's like little squares. Still to come on Chronicle. There's no way to fit all your favorite pizza places into one 60-minute special. You don't come in, you go through the door, you do, hand it out, and it's pick and go. It's just their, their own style. You don't get this anywhere else. But up next, the Chronicle team hits a few of the spots our viewers said were worth the trip. Welcome back to Chronicle Slice of the Berg. As we end this hour-long special, we want to highlight a couple more of Pittsburgh's favorite pizza places. That's right. We know one hour is not nearly enough time to visit every Pittsburgh restaurant, so we asked our viewers for some additional suggestions. And don't worry. We heard you. We know Pittsburghers have some strong opinions about their pizza, and you did not disappoint. It started on July 11, 1963. They know just by word of mouth. I don't have a website or anything like that. I don't even advertise. 129 Lenicky Street, the literal home of Mary Jo's Pizza. Mary Jo Meyer's legacy? Making pizzas in the basement of this Wilkins Township home, honoring the memory of her mom, Concetta Pallarino, who founded the business when Mary Jo was born. I had people come from Blairsville. There was Elizabeth PA. I had a girl that actually lived here, but she lived in, I don't, I want to say Utah or somewhere, and she got like 16 of them. And every year she comes back, she'll get like 10 or so. Customers can't come in the house and they never will. It's takeout only here with limited days and times. It's four days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for three hours. No one sees Mary Jo either. A specially made door allows customers to slide the money in as Mary Jo slides the pizzas out. I like their style. It's different from anybody else's, the small cuts. Of course, we found a loyal customer base at many other fan favorite pizza shops. Family owned Sir Pizza started serving the Ross Township community and beyond in 1975. We get a lot of families, a lot of sports teams, like after, after baseball games, soccer games. Football games on Friday nights are pretty big. And in McKee's Rocks. The best pizza in Pittsburgh by far, easily. Doughboy's Pizza on Island Avenue has a constant stream of orders. Right there, that's 300. We don't really count, you know, we just keep going, right? Straight from the oven to the box, Rockaway Pizza in White Oak is beloved for their New York style pizza. This shop on Lincoln Way is no stranger to a thin, crispy crust, with customers always getting one big order an 18-inch eight-cut pie. 
Farther north in Wexford, there's been a steady stream of calls to get pizza from Mama Lucia for nearly 50 years. Many of you also gave a shout out to Le Lulo's Pizzeria in Plum. And when it comes to the newer pizza scene, one fan favorite brings us to Pittsburgh's Strip District. This is, I think, one of the only places to get this kind of pizza. With Detroit-style pizza at Ironborn. Yeah, that's why I like it. People think it looks cool, tastes good. Or sourdough-based pizza at Driftwood Oven in Lawrenceville. And not far away on Butler Street is V3 Flatbread Pizza, calling themselves the Chipotle of pizza. You can get a look inside all of these kitchens in our digital extra right now on the WTAE app and WTAE.com. We hope you got a new taste for the Pittsburgh pizza scene during this episode of Chronicle Slice of the Berg. And even if you're not a big pizza fan, maybe you were still able to learn something new about the dedicated entrepreneurs and the pizza makers in your community. And if your mouth is still watering, there might still be time to go order your favorite pie. On behalf of our entire Chronicle team, thank you for watching and have a great night. And oh yeah, go get a slice.